Good right. evening. Welcome to the regular meeting of West District Mayor and Common Council. Council meets here at City Hall the second and fourth Mondays of every month. Please note the council meeting, although open to the public here at City Hall, are also available and streamed live on the city's YouTube page, as well as the Community Media Center channel and website. Now we'll begin to do every meeting with the touch of the flag, followed by the Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, public for which it stands, one nation under God, it is all with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. As a currency, everyone, please take a moment to silence your cell phones or any other electronic devices that might ring or beat or otherwise disturb the meeting. Copies of tonight's agenda and the entire information packet of the Council of the Union are available online at the city's website and available in hard copy, the agenda anyway, here in the front of the room. Please know we have Commissioner Tom Gordon with us again. Commissioner, always a pleasure to see you. Thanks for coming tonight. Thank you. Uh, we also have former Mayor Joe Dominic, Mr. Mayor. Always a pleasure to see you here as well. Um, begin the meeting with some presentations. The first is the announcement of um, the Canada's for Common Council. Our city clerk, Mr. Barber, will now report of the candidates who have filed for seats for the Common Council for the 2023 election. Mr. Robert. Okay, thanks, sir. So the filing for the City of Westminster Tuesday, May 9th, 2023 general election is now closed. Candidates for the 2023 general election are as follows. Kevin Earl Dayhoff, Anne Gilbert, Greg Becquerero, Scott Willis. Uh, please note the uh, City of Westminster Board of Elections has formally certified all the listed above candidates for the office. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Robert. All right. Um, next, we have a mayoral proclamation. Dr. Becker. All right. Thank you. All right. So, um, the mayoral proclamation tonight is uh, in recognition of Public Service Recognition Week. Um, so, I would ask our city administrator, Ms. Impulse, to Please come forward. Don't worry, don't have to Whereas Americans are served every single day by public service employees at the federal, state, county, and municipal levels, and the actions of these public service employees enhance the quality of life in jurisdictions across the nation. And the city of Westminster is served by many dedicated public service employees providing a variety of services to the community. And the services performed by these employees include general administration, housing and code enforcement, human resources, inf information technology, public safety, public works, and recreation and parks. And the mayor and common council wish to recognize the work performed by city employees and those public employees employed by other levels of government. Now, therefore, I, Dr. Martin Becker, mayor of the city of Westminster, on behalf of the common council, do hereby proclaim that May 7th through the 13th, 2023, is hereby declared as Public Service Recognition Week in the city of Westminster. And be it further proclaimed that all residents are encouraged to join the mayor and common council in celebrating the accomplishment and contributions of government employees at all levels. Thank you. I'll take a picture. Sure. I'll have a... Sorry, you can't go <laughs> Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you, uh, Mayor Beckers. Um, and now we will move on to the approval of the minutes. We have minutes from the meeting of the mayor and council on March 27, 2023. We have a motion to approve the minutes. So moved. A motion by Mr. Dale. Is there a second? Second. There's a second by Ms. Gilbert. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Those opposed, please say nay. The yeah, ayes seem to have the chance to have it. The minutes are approved. Thank you. Um, move on now to our report from the mayor. Thank, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I know uh, several others have uh, quite a bit to report, so I'll keep my comments very brief. 
Um, I'd like to thank uh, Councilman Kibachi for joining me at a meeting last Monday where we addressed some of the concerns of residents living alongside Wakefield Valley uh, Park. And um, I think that meeting went very well. Uh, and we were able to listen and address some of this, those concerns. And we have some ideas for moving forward um, that we gleaned from that uh, evening meeting. Um, secondly, and my last point is I would just like to thank, first of all, I'm very happy to see uh, Ms. Imhoff's back at a council meeting, um, but I'd like to mention that over the last uh, four weeks or so, three, three weeks, uh, Mr. Depot, uh, Chief Ledwell, uh, Mr. Moore, you know, he's only been with us for a little bit, Mr. Brown, um, Mr. Dick, Mrs. Gruber, um, Mrs. Rogers, uh, and um, Mrs. Brown. No. Uh, McCullough. McCullough, Ms. McCullough, sorry. Um, everyone really uh, stepped forward um, and helped us get through these last couple of weeks. So uh, I just want to say, once again, I know I've spoken to most of you all personally, but um, I just wanted to recognize it publicly, publicly at a meeting that we have a phenomenal staff at 45 West Main Street, um, due in part to um, our city administrator and her leadership there. So um, just want to say thank you. And that is all, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Dr. Anthony. Uh, we'll move on now to reports from standing committees. We'll begin with uh, our latest under the Carroll County Arts Council, Mr. Dale. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, by all reports, the uh, the peak show was a great success. It brought lots of folks into town. I heard lots of good reports about folks coming to downtown Westminster um, after uh, um, checking out the peak show. And that's all good stuff. We have an upcoming meeting with the Carroll Arts Council uh, this coming Wednesday. Lots of exciting programming, lots of really good movies. Check out the website for more information. That'll be my report. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dayhoff. Uh, Economic and Community Development Committee, Mr. Hoff. Uh, no report of uh, this, uh, this meeting, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hoff. On um, behalf of the Finance Committee, uh, report that uh, we, of course, are now in the uh, in the heart of the budget season, um, and uh, you know, very busy working on on that with the staff. Uh, we have a couple of uh, finance committee meetings scheduled over the uh, next uh, two weeks. Um, we, we uh, you all should plan on uh, receiving budget documents um, mm -hmm. on or close to April twenty first. I think so. You'll have you know perhaps a week to review them. Um, we expect to have we'll be having our special meeting. Of the council on May 1st, the introduction of the budget. Uh, at that time, we'll also have the budget presentation by the staff and the budget hearing, the budget public hearing. Um, we can plan also on a budget workshop on May 2nd at 4 p.m. and then adoption of the budget at the regular meeting of the mayor and council on May 8th. And um, I believe Mr. Uh, Barber, will we be able to get the first of you? Advertise? Yes, sir. Okay, great. So we'll have the public hearing on the 24th and 24th. So that's a report of the finance committee. Looking forward to sharing details with you um, on the uh, on the budget itself in a couple of weeks. And that's it for that. Um, move on to the personnel committee, Ms. Gilbert. I just want to draw everybody's attention to our website um, regarding our city positions. We still have several positions available. Um, mainly centering around our summer camp season and the opening of our new pool, um, camp directors, lifeguards, pool managers, assistant pool managers, and camp counselor positions. These are great summer job opportunities and or a great way for um, your college student that may be living with you to earn some extra money as a summer job opportunity. So um, send them on to our website and then fill out an application. We also have deputy and entry level and lateral police officer positions open. So take a look. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Public safety, Mr. Kamachi. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, got a couple of things. Lateral police officer Trevino Elliott was about halfway through, is about halfway through his comparative compliance academy training at in Cecil County. Uh, this is a community training program that certifies out of state lateral officers. Uh, that are hired um, with all the Maryland specific laws and requirements. Once Officer Elliott completes this training, he'll begin his field training and evaluation program, which is good news because uh, we need 
Um, we also have a police recruit, Jacob Everhart. Uh, he's attending the NPCPP Entry Level Police Academy. For he's about a month into it. He's doing well. He's scheduled to graduate in August again. We'll be happy to see him come on board. Um, West Virginia Police Department patrol officers have charged Jason Tyler Green with a series of criminal offenses ranging from theft to violation of peace order. Uh, Mr. Green, who I've heard his name quite frequently over the past few months, is currently being held on no bond status at the detention center. So that's a very good thing. Um, the last thing is I wanted to just kind of paraphrase uh, a letter that we received from a gentleman um, who uh, his wife is uh, suffering from Parkinson's disease, and she wanted to participate in the uh, walk that took place. Uh, I believe that was on Good Friday, is that right, Chief? Um, and uh, it was a letter commendating uh, uh, Tim, uh, Lieutenant Tim Wright. Um, and, you know, for someone to take the time to write, which was, was a pretty detailed and, 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 and relatively long letter uh, about how it impacted uh, his wife and him uh, on, on this walk in, in terms of what, what Lieutenant Wright did. He talked about um, the fact that she really wanted to participate in the event, but there was concerns and they were immediately allayed by the kindness shown by uh, Lieutenant Wright. He indicated that he went out of his way to make the event enjoyable for her, safe and meaningful. He, uh, on numerous occasions, uh, would check on them and constantly make sure that, that they were, were were safe in terms of participating in this event. He would walk back and make sure that anytime he saw an area in the sidewalk that he thought the wheelchair might have trouble with, you know, he, he, he went back and made sure that she was able to navigate uh, everything safely. Um, and it really made just a wonderful day, it sounds like. Uh, for uh, for for Mrs. Templeton and, and Mr. Templeton, and uh, again, he just wanted to talk about how it was so impactful and how his work uh, made such a you know exceptional impression on him and, and the other citizens around, and talked about him being a role model. So um, I just wanted to bring that to everyone's attention. You know, we get letters like that occasionally about our police officers, but this one was uh, real poignant, and I thought it was something worth sharing publicly with the rest of you. So. Thank you, Mr. President. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Potts, for sharing that. You're welcome. Thanks. Once again, thanks, Terry. All right. Uh, Public Works Committee, Mr. Kovacic. Yes, sir. Uh, the Utilities Department continues to televise uh, sewer mains for ongoing inflow and infiltration, uh, which is great. We want to stay on that. That's uh, it's a big money saver, or at least a big inflow saver for the um, wastewater treatment plant. Um, the cleaning uh, behind the dam and uh, pipe at Hall Creek. They responded to a six-inch six water main break on Gist Road and repaired, uh, repaired it, and it was operational within three hours, which is really great. I, I know I was a little concerned about the hospital being effective, and clearly the guys were able to make it so it was not, which is wonderful. Uh, they removed some downed trees um, from uh, the race. Uh, what, what is that? Uh, the race the area of the stream. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, okay. Additionally, the utilities department will be flushing hydrants from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. on April 10th, 11th, and 12th in the following areas. And this is good to note Airport Industrial Parks, Bolton Hill, Meadow Creek, uh, Clydeland Beach, Southern Heights, and Eden Farms. And that's sometimes going to cause the water to get a little bit discolored, but it is safe yes. uh, uh, to drink. I had to explain that to my daughter the other day when uh, that happened in our house. She was kind of freaking out about it a little bit. Um, the street department uh, tilled and prepared the community gardens, trimmed some trees at City Park, set up and executed, um, set up, executed, and cleaned for the Easter egg hunt, and they rebuilt a stormwater catch basin on, gear, on the gear line. That is all I have, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Karachi. Recreation and Parks, Mr. Dayhoff. Brief report. By all reports, the, um, the Ether Egg Hunt was a huge hit. Um, we're looking forward to having a meeting sometime soon and the progress report on the poll, how uh, that's coming along. And, um, we got the Main Street Mall this Wednesday, the Main Street Mall this Wednesday, um, which is a big event. It's the 40th anniversary of the Main Street Mall. 
which is uh, pretty much a, a regional event. Folks can come from, come from all around to participate in the Main Street Mile. Uh, the wine struggle is coming up. Um, oh, what's the date on the wine? Wine Trail is coming up April 22nd, brings a lot of folks to town. Uh, another great event. We really appreciate all the hard work of uh, Abby's Warriors over there. Thank you, Mr. President. All right. Thank you, Mr. Dayhoff. And uh, I have nothing to share tonight on behalf of the uh, Technology Committee. Move on now to Council Comments and Discussion. This is when Council members have a chance to, uh, to report on or comment on or discuss anything. There's not elsewhere on the agenda. And then I'm going to you know, take the um, opportunity to lead off for you because we've got some really good dudes that we want to share publicly that we're very excited about. Uh, come to come out of Annapolis. Uh, Westminster doesn't often go down to the legislature to look for things, but this year we had the opportunity or the occasion to do that on two different uh, issues. One is um, we needed to uh, get some legislation adopted that would allow the Maryland Department of the Environment to be able to move forward with the permitting process on our water reuse project. Um, because it's so new in Maryland anyway, although it's done elsewhere in the country and around the world very successfully, that, that the department uh, didn't know if it had the authority to be able to move forward with what we needed to get done. So uh, the legislature has now granted that authority. Uh, both houses of the legislature have adopted the legislation, which was sponsored by our Carroll County legislative delegation. I want to thank uh, Senator Jeff Reddy and my delegate Ethan Rose in particular for uh, having taken the lead on getting that done. Um, working with our staff, uh, by Ms. Inhalls, who did an awful lot of work to tee that up very, very quickly. And get, as we only had a day or two at the beginning of the session, we realized that it was necessary. Uh, but move quickly. Um, uh, uh, the mayor, uh, Mr. Hoff, and I had the, the opportunity to go down to Annapolis to uh, address the committees and testify on this issue uh, and, uh, and speak to a number of legislators from across the state. And we were able to get this done. So I'm very pleased that it passed both houses on its way to the governor's desk. And we look forward to a bill signing very shortly. That's very exciting for us to be able to move forward with that vitally important project for the city. Second thing is we also went to Annapolis uh, and we asked if the uh, state could uh, give us a hand with uh, financing the, our, the city's uh, uh, Westminster Fiber Network. Westminster was a pioneer on fiber. You know, we, not, we launched our initiative long before any other municipalities had thought to do it. And so we are pioneers in that regard. Um, after we got ours underway, you know, a lot of federal money and state money became available for municipalities who wanted to start building a fiber network. The way those projects were structured, those funds were structured, we weren't able to go back and ask for help to, with what we'd already done. So we went to the legislature and asked and the governor and asked if it would be possible to help Westminster with um, you know, meeting some of the costs of what Westminster had, um, had put out for this. I'm very, very pleased that uh, the legislature responded positively and we have $4 million coming from the legislature um, over the next four years, a million dollars a year. So that's a tremendous help for us in being able to uh, manage that project. Once again, great work by the staff in helping to prepare all the work that we needed to have to be able to go down there. And then um, you know, the mayor and Mr. Hoff and I once again went down there and had a lot of conversations with people um, and very, very pleased that, that we were able to do that. Uh, special thanks to the Senate President who took uh, took our suggestions on helping us very kindly, as well as the Chair of the Senate Budget Committee, uh, Guy Gazone from Howard County, and um, Senator Craig Zucker to chair the Capital Budget Subcommittee from Montgomery County, who uh, particularly in Senator Zucker's case, they did a lot of the work to make sure that we got it. Very much appreciate uh, their understanding the situation we were in, the Westminster community in this area, and uh, you know, sort of the element of fairness in trying to help and the state help us out on this. So, once again, two very big wins for Westminster and Dallas this year. We're very, very pleased that uh, we were able to get that done. Um, that's all I had for tonight. I'll move on now to Mr. Kabachi. Yeah, thanks, Mr. President. I got a few things just I wanted to touch on. Um, one, uh, I wanted to thank the mayor. I think she did a good job with the Wakefield Valley meeting and bringing in some 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 of our staff as well as some county staff as well as the uh, folks that were actually the organization that planted the trees. And I agree. I think we made good headway with the folks. That I think 
a lot of people asked me how the meeting went. I said, I think most of them came there relatively upset uh, at the start of the meeting. And I think the majority walked away feeling much better. Of course, there's a few that will not change their opinion, but that's not uncommon. Um, I also wanted to um, uh, briefly just echo, Mr. President, what you said, but I wanted to thank, you know, you talked about staff and all the other folks and the uh, other state officials, but I know you and uh, Councilman Huff played a pretty significant role. Um, and, and, and I know the mayor did on, on the first one, but on the second one with fiber, um, which has probably been the one thing that's kept me awake occasionally in the evening. Um, I think you, you know, you played a really significant role. You leveraged a lot of the relationships that you've built over the past 30 or so years in, uh, in the state. And I know that you thanked a bunch of people a few minutes ago, but the reason those people, uh, I think, did some of the things they did is because you cashed in some chips, uh, on, you know, that you have earned over the years. And I think without that, um, it, you probably would not have gotten that much. So I, I wanted to say that I, I don't probably speak for everybody here how grateful I am that you were able to leverage those relationships. That's not counting $4 million definitely goes a long way. Um, and I do think it's fair because they're funding all these other programs for all these other municipalities. And we're kind of a little bit getting punished because we were out early. Um, but between you and Councilman Hudson, the mayor, uh, I just wanted to say thank you very much. You guys did a wonderful job. Lastly, um, I do have touched on something as I, I know you guys are aware of, on helping our city clerk a little bit on just uh, some back back end election things since I'm not running this this time around. And I, I think most of you are probably aware, but I want to make sure everyone is. Um, there was some information sent out by the county, um, and it was it was it, it was related. The reason some of the information was sent out inaccurately is because there were some um, changes in the district lines relative to the state and county. And that ended up mucking up a little bit of the information relative to the city. And there was some, I, I think, notification sent out to some residents saying that their voting location had changed. When in fact, with the city elections, that's not the case. And Doug, I want you to correct me if I say anything wrong here. Um, it, it, it remains that if you are west of 31, you're still voting at Royal Road at the community building um, up by the pool. And if you're on the other, on this side of 31, you're voting at the fire hall. Um, nothing has changed. It's it's the same as it's always been. And I believe the county's going to send some information back out to those folks that got some inaccurate information um, to correct that. No one's not going to get the vote, even if they went to the wrong place. They would just be redirected to the correct place, which fortunately is only about a mile apart. But the county is going to fix their mistake and, and send out uh, the appropriate information so that uh, that people know where where to vote, and we appreciate the county for working with us. And I, I'm grateful for our city clerk. Uh, he's done a wonderful job. He's really on top of this, and he caught it early and jumped right in. Is getting corrected. So, Doug, thank you very much for uh, being on top of that. That's all I have, Mr. President. I right, thank you, Mr. Machi, and thank you for working with Mr. Barber on that and other issues. Um, Mr. Bayhoff. Oh, thank you, Mr. President. Um, I wanted to mention, um, Councilman Kavachi, if it's okay with you, uh, the passing of, uh, of uh, Roland Meritor. Uh, Roland Meritor was a distinguished Maryland State Police officer for many years, and um, he was quite close with uh, Councilman Kavachi and Councilman Kavachi's dad, who uh, served on council uh, for many years. Um, how, um, Colonel Meritor, what was his rank? He was a lieutenant colonel. Lieutenant colonel. I always call him sir. Um, lieutenant colonel Meritor uh, served on the, um, uh, the the chief's uh, selection committee when we selected a chief in 2003, and he was extremely helpful. It was a very difficult time, and uh, his advice was uh, extremely helpful uh, throughout that entire process. He passed away on March the 20th, and several of us participated in a service for um, <clears throat> Lieutenant Colonel Meritor on uh, March the 31st. Um, I want to echo the remarks of, um, well, I, I also appreciate that, that Councilman Kavachi uh, made mention of the uh, 
uh, the, the region county notification. I got quite a few um, questions about that. So if we can, yeah, I, I really appreciate you mentioning that. Um, also, I, I can't thank um, Council President um, uh, Pecoraro and the Mayor, Mayor uh, Becker and uh, Council Member Huff for all their hard work down at the, the Maryland General Assembly. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of long days and uh, it's always on a very, very short notice. Always on a very short notice and they did a wonderful job by, by all reports uh, of that. Um, I participated in the egg hunt that was put on by Find Your Purpose, <laughs> Billy Live and London Pettis. Uh, they built the Westminster Playground uh, for, it was a pretty awesome um, Easter egg hunt that was on Saturday, uh, April was the 8th. Um, I also participated in the, um, on April 1st, uh, the Reed Fire Company celebrated its 75th uh, anniversary. And um, I participated in that banquet that was held on, on April the 1st. And I really appreciated the March 29th, uh, the Carroll County Veterans Independence Project um, held an event uh, for National Vietnam War Veterans Day. I really, really super appreciate that event. Uh, I guess we didn't get treated really well after the war. Uh, I think uh, ceremonies like that go a long ways uh, as far as, as helping that out a little bit. Um, congratulations to Billy Schroeder on his retirement from Gulianova. Uh, and this is the third owner, it's just recently been sold. This is the third owner, um, Tony uh, DeGenio started it. He started it back in um, 1986. 1986, Billy Schroeder um, purchased it in 2003, and now it's been sold. And uh, the folks that have purchased it have vowed to continue to all the traditions of Gullianova, and that brings a lot of folks downtown. Um, happy that the Westminster Clock Tower has uh, is, is uh, um, underway. Um, it's really important that we uh, preserve and, and maintain that clock. It was built in 80, 1896. Um, and then um, I really appreciate that we planted 22 acres of trees at Wakefield Park. I really, really appreciate that. Uh, I was kind of curious if during your community meeting, you you should have reread the proclamation for Harper Day. <laughs> uh, it's really important that we do something about reforestation. I did participate in developing the uh, forest conservation ordinance for the state and the county years ago, and it's really important that we continue to plant trees. And then finally, on May 1st, McDaniel College is hosting a day long academic symposium, uh, which will showcase in the morning a conversation with Carroll County leaders, which will feature uh, the city administrator, Sarah M. Holt, and uh, our mayor, Mona Becker, and we're really proud of that. Uh, that's a regional event, and uh, we really appreciate uh, your participation in that on top of all of your other duties. And that'll work, that'll, that'll finish it up for me, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hoff. How many eggs did you no, I didn't pick up any, but I almost got run over. I was afraid you were knocking down some kids. <laughs> um, there were an awful lot of folks there. Um, There's a video of him dancing. Well, we'll have to well there, there is a video. There is a, yeah. there's, there's a video. It may not be not safe. I mean, he's surrounded by, by children. <laughs> Um, I might just have to look that up. Petey Grooms. <laughs> Petey Grooms, a very good friend of mine, a fellow Vietnam vet, dragged me out uh, when he was dancing. And uh, you can't say no to uh, the, the Petey Grooms. Um, we also gave away 500 pounds of food, which my wife's been on bad one for Carroll County Food Sunday. It was, it was an awesome event. I did not get hurt, but it was it was touch and go there for a while. Okay. We'll look forward to the food event. Let's go. Um, I, I, I don't know that I can. I think I'm almost speechless. <laughs> Didn't you dance on video within the last week? No, nope, not at all. Okay. No, I, I tried Hard to dance to a little bit on, on our city egg hunt, but it was a little cold and wet. So, but, 
The only reason I was dancing is to keep warm. I think. Um, no, not that. No, not all. Um, I uh, everybody pretty much did all the thank yous to um, to the to my colleagues here on the council, the delegates, and city staff um, for all the work that they did in Annapolis. It's a, it's a lot of of work, not only just taking time to go down there and spending time there and talking to everybody, but also on the backside of all the phone calls, all the it, it, all the paperwork, everything, just to get all that legislation. So I just wanted to to thank everyone who. Um, who took their time. Um, I know I went down a couple of times with um, Councilman Huff and it was, it's, it's just a lot to, to take that work. Um, so I want to just thank everybody. Um, also, I um, wanted to say thank you to Tony and um, the mayor on taking point on the Wakefield meeting and um, dealing with the trees. Um, I'll leave that at that. Um, and I wanted to make everyone aware of the ribbon cutting that's happening on Monday for Ducky Town um, in collaboration with Magic. Um, and um, the wine strolls the 22nd, so just be aware of that. I believe that was already mentioned, and I'm going to make my report very short and end it there. Right. Thank you, Ms. Gilbert. Mr. Hoff. Yes, uh, Mr. President. Um, the only thing I will add is just uh, we, we talked about the water reuse and the fiber. But just how much, like, I appreciate the fact of our collaboration as a group. Uh, we are a nonpartisan group. Um, but, you know, in Annapolis, you know, it is a partisan environment. Uh, there was Democrats, Republicans. And I have to say that, you know, between the leadership down there in Annapolis on the Democratic side and our, our local delegation who are Republicans, um, it was a very collaborative effort among all of us. And um, not to get on a soapbox, but I kind of think that's more of what we need in this world is people working together uh, for the best interests of our community. Um, and it is such a pleasure for me to be working uh, among a group that is like that, working for the best interests of our community and, um, and then working with our, our local delegation uh, they had our backs when it came to these requests and uh, work, work really hard behind the scenes for us as well. Um, so I just want to say in the environment that we so often hear people complain about um, how refreshing it is to be in an environment like we are right now uh, among this group and uh, our friends locally in the delegation. So uh, that's it, Council President. All right. Thank you very much, Mr. Hunt. All right, we'll move on now to the next order of business, which is ordinance of the resolution. We have three items for it tonight. First is the adoption of ordinance number 2023-02, an ordinance of the ordinance of the mayor and common council, accepting a quick claim deed for an unimproved section of Sy Sycamore Street located between East Green Street and Winchester Avenue in the city of Westminster. Mr. Dita. Uh, thank you. On March 27, 2023, the Mayor and Common Council introduced Ordinance 2023. Uh, if the Mayor and Common Council adopt the ordinance, uh, we will be back before the Mayor and Common Council for a license agreement granting the non-exclusive license over and across that portion of Sycamore Street right of way uh, to provide a driveway to a vacant parcel for a single family house as well as utilities. Uh, and with that, staff recommends that the Mayor and Common Council adopt ordinance number 2023-2 as provided in attachment one of this report, accepting a quick claim deed to an unimproved portion of Sycamore located between East Green Street and Westminster Avenue in the city of Westminster. And that completes my report. I'm available for any questions. All right, thank you. Let's um, have a motion for adoption. So I make a motion. I'll move, Mr. President. No, so a motion by Mr. Cavacci and a second by Mr. Day. Right. Is there any discussion or questions for Mr. Depot? I think we had this pretty thoroughly explained at the, when we had this for introduction. Mr. President. Mr. Dayhoff. But we do understand that eventually they're going to connect Sycamore Street. <laughs> that's what we want to do. When it was for Dell Vedention in the 1800s, it was that's what was that that's what wanted to be accomplished. He's this person is just going to build a driveway there, but later on, we're going to get it connected through. And that is the case. This is just for the driveway. The quick claim deed is the first step that gives us that right. So in the future, if we ever want to make that connection, which we do, um, we have that ability. 
No further questions, Mr. President. Thank you. Right, very good. Thank you, Mr. Mayhaw. Thank you, Mr. Depot. Anyone else, Mr. Depot? All right, hearing nothing else, move on to a vote. All those in favor of adoption of Order Number 2023 02, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Be yeah, asked to have it and not to have it, and the ordinance is adopted. The next one is the resolutions, and they're sort of a piece together. They're both connected to the same item. And let me just say, you know, it's a brief refactory remarks here that we're very pleased this is finally coming to us. I know that it took a lot of work to get here. I want to thank um, uh, Kelly Schaefer and her firm for having done pro bono work to uh, help make this possible. I want to thank the uh, the folks who have done such a wonderful job of cleaning up and caring for the cemetery over the last several years and doing that. Um, you know, really critical and critically important part of our community history. And I'm glad that it's uh, finally getting the attention of me. This first item is going to be for um, to waive the application fees, and then the second item will be on the um, introduction of the actual annotation position. So we go with adoption of resolution number 23-05, a resolution of the mayor and common council of the city of Westminster, authorizing the common council to waive the application fees for an annexation petition for applicants that are nonprofit entities and demonstrate substantial hardship. Thank you. Thanks. Recently, the Community Foundation of Carroll County, Inc., the petitioner, submitted a petition to the Mayor and Common Council of the City of Westminster to annex 1.1812 acres of land commonly known as Ellsworth Cemetery. The city established a filing fee of $2,500 for annexation petitions and a requirement that the applicant pay legal costs by resolution number 2004, approving the general fee schedule for governmental and proprietary functions of the city. The petitioner has asked, has requested that these fees and costs be waived due to the nonprofit status of the petitioner. The city code and the general fee schedule do not authorize the common council to waive the application fees for an annexation petition. The attached resolution of the mayor and common council authorizes the common council to waive the application fee for annexation petition for applicants like the petitioner that are nonprofit entities and demonstrate substantial hardship. So with that, staff recommends that the Mayor and Common Council adopt resolution 2302, authorizing the Common Council to waive the application fees for an annexation petition for applicants that are nonprofit entities and demonstrate substantial hardship. And that completes my report and available for any questions. So thank you, Speaker. Uh, let's get a motion uh, on adoption of the resolution. I have a motion. I'll make a motion to accept the resolution. Right, the motion to adopt the resolution 23-05. Is there a second? Uh, second. Thank you. The motion by Ms. Gilbert and a second by Mr. Hoff. Uh, any discussion or any uh, questions? Mr. Hoff. Mr. Mayor. I just I want to say um, this seems like a little bit of a no-brainer to me for nonprofits uh, entities within the city, or not within the city yet, but requesting an annexation into the city. Um, because I was unaware that we were unable to waive uh, the annex fee, the, the annexation fee. Um, I think that this was a perfect sort of resolution to that, and I'm glad that this is being finalized uh, in here. So uh, I appreciate this coming up before the mayor and the council. Thank you. Thanks, but you can authorize yourself to do something. Right? <laughs> I need to disclose the full disclosure that my wife serves on the board. Carroll County, uh, the Community Foundation of County, and that I did not need for 20 years to annex this property. Do um, you think it's okay to I vote? I mean, that's fine. Um, no, and there's no financial pay, there's only cost. Okay. Yeah, thank you. This isn't specific to that situation anyway. I'm sorry. Well, but it, it does involve waiving fees. I, you're, you're fine. Sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Ms. LeVan gave you the five and I'm tough. So. Yeah. <laughs> President, Mr. President, Mr. Right. So let me get this out of the way first. I have every intention of voting for 23 or 6 of the actual annexation, mm -hmm. but I have some reservations about this particular resolution. Pretty broad. And I I understand, Madam Mayor, how much I love you and won't look at the you the room, but uh, I, I, I don't agree that just. Uh, any nonprofit fees should be waived for. And I know it's, it doesn't say any nonprofit, but you know, 
there's a pretty broad gamut in terms of financial resources from one nonprofit to the other. There are nonprofits relatively close to the city, for example, the hospital, uh, that probably could swing a $2,500 fee. Because let's keep in mind, we're not assessing this fee willy-nilly. It isn't just saying, hey, we're charging 2500 bucks for nothing. There's a lot of work that goes into these annexations. I can't even begin to imagine the dozens, if not hundreds of hours that staff puts into, uh, you know, these annexations and the work that goes into it on, on our city attorney's part, um, which he gives us a very good deal, but it's still a lot of money. Thank you. Um, <laughs> and I, I, I'm reticent to just waive these fees based upon, uh, I think the language says, nonprofit that demonstrates a need or something like it that. that. Yeah. What does that mean? You know, what, what, what's the definition of that? Who's the arbiter? Who's going to decide what that financial hardship is? What's the threshold? Um, I, 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 I'm, I don't want to muck everything up on, on the next one because I, I really want to get the next one done um, because I think it's really important and I'm really in favor of it. But I'm concerned about this one. There's lots of unintended consequences when we go and make we make ordinance and change it, change things like this. And I'm just worried down the road that all of a sudden people are going to annex and they form themselves a nice little nonprofit and say, well, we want to come in, but we want to, we need your water. So, uh, but we're going to form a nonprofit because we need the water. So we don't have to pay that fee. Um, I know it's not a lot of money, but I just wanted to express my concerns about it. Um, and I probably can't vote for it based upon the way the language is currently written. Again, I have every intention of voting for the next one after this. So there's not there's two, in my opinion, are not totally related, even though I know why we're doing it. Right, thank you, Mr. Crunch. Yes, so I would just note that uh, the language does say um, they, that they would have to submit a waiver request in writing accompanied by such documentation as the mayor may from time to time establish that the entity is a nonprofit organization that he would constitute a substantial hardship that would impair the ability of the entity to pursue its own mission. So, you know, I think just a few example, you know, certainly as you noted, you know, the hospital is not a lot of these choices, particularly now that it is part of a for profit entity. Um, well, that's true. That's a good yeah. point. <laughs> and, and, um, not yeah, the, and, but, you know, even, even that being the case, you know, it's, um, you know, they've still got, you know, they've still got substantial resources and you know, it would not appear, $2,500 does not have to end up really through the core mission. I think that, you know, while it may not be as narrowly targeted as, you know, as I make you comfortable, I think that, you know, making this case, it becomes a judgment call for the mayor and council, mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, future mayors and councils perhaps would have to, would have to make a judgment call on this, uh, you know, I, I yeah, president. I, I want to make sure I'm understanding. This is authorizing us to a waiver. It's authorizing us to, to give a waiver. To give a waiver. Yeah, yeah, to, to give a waiver. But what my point is is not authorizing any specific waiver. Correct. Someone has to come to us to ask for the waiver. Yes. yes. Who I, I want to make sure, and this might be a question for legal counsel, as it's currently written, who is has the authority to grant that waiver. Because to me, it says by such document as the mayor may from time to time establish, doesn't say the mayor is the one making that determination of authorizing the waiver. So from a legal counsel, how is this going to work technically when a waiver request comes in? Who is the one, who is the party voting for the waiver? So. In my view, it would be most appropriate for the mayor and council for the legislative body to make that decision. And so if you wanted to amend the resolution just to insert the words, may apply for a waiver from the mayor and common council um, in, the, in the resolution paragraph, that might address your very valid point. So I, what my point went to be, uh, I love the mayor as well, is that I do believe <laughs> I do believe uh, Councilman Kabachi has a point that I'm fine us authorizing the language, but I would like any waiver to come back to the council that we can grant it uh, to make that determination. 
um, when we're granting it specifically. So if we could amend that language, I would be comfortable with voting for it as well. So is everybody comfortable with an amendment that would say, by submitting a waiver request in writing to the mayor and common council, is that what you meant, Ms. Yes. Right, to the mayor and common where, council. Where, where is, can you, in the, so the, the first right. resolved clause? In the first, in the first resolved clause, okay. Okay. Yes, Thank Mr. President. At the, end, at the end of the third line, we would okay. add um, those words. So with that, so with that objection, we yeah. would like to make the motion to. Uh, yeah, I'll make the motion to make that change to the uh, ordinance. Right. You want a second? I'll uh, second. All right. Thank you. Moved and seconded by Mr. Kamachi. Any further discussion on the amendment, which would just insert the mayor and council into the approval? Uh, right. 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 All in favor, say aye. 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 Is it not as All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Move on now to um, introduction and adoption of resolution number 23 06. Um, Ellsworth Cemetery Annexation, Annexation 36, enlarging the corporate boundaries of the city of Westminster by annexing the city the city certain property containing 1.1812 acres contiguous to adjoining the city's. Existing corporate boundaries. In the land located on the north side of Lighty Road, commonly known as Elvis Ellsworth Cemetery, also identified as tax account number 07 004 788 and 46 with 0016, also 1592. Thank you. And again, this will sound familiar, but with that, uh, the Community Foundation of Carroll County Inc. petitioners pursuant to the Annotated Code of Maryland Local Government Article Title 4, Subtitle 4, has petitioned the Mayor and Common Council of the City of Westminster to annex 1.1812 acres of land located on the north side of Lydon Road, commonly known as Ellsworth Cemetery, owned by the petitioner into the corporate boundaries of the city. This annexation area is zoned R10,000 Residence District under the Carroll County Zoning Ordinance. The petitioner is requesting that the property be zoned C Conservation Zone under the city zoning ordinance. The annexation petition submitted by the petitioner meets the requirements in the annotated code of Maryland Local Government Article Division 2, Title 4, Subtitle 4 of the Zoning Ordinance Section and Zoning Ordinance Section 1646. The property is contiguous to and adjoining the existing boundaries of the city. This annexation of the property will not create an isolated area or enclave of the unincorporated land of the city's boundaries. Representatives for the application have submitted the letter requesting the annexation filing fee of $2,500 be waived due to the nonprofit status of the petitioner. The letter explains that there is no new plan development in association with this proposed annexation and any allocation of funds for financial account for this annexation process, if possible, would take funds away from the maintenance and improvements of the cemetery. Following introduction of the annexation petition, a resolution to the Mayor and Common Council, um, the resolution will be forwarded to Carroll County and Maryland Department of Planning for its information and comments and to the City's Planning Commission for its recommendation. With that, staff recommends that the Mayor and Common Council introduce Resolution 2306 for annexation, allowing the annexation process to begin. That completes my report, and I'm available for any questions. All right, thank you, uh, Mr. Deepo. So we've got two things to do here, right? We've got, uh, is, the, is the waiver request before us at the moment? The the actual waiver language is actually in the resolution. So the resolution um, outlines the request being made by the petitioner as well as the mayor and common council waiving the. And in preparation and anticipation of that comment, there is the it actually does say the mayor and common council. Somebody was taking this. Now, this is just for introduction. Though, right? This is yeah. just for introduction. Yeah. So we're just going to hold that the issue remains. The resolution 
brought back and come back to us and adopted. Yes. Right. Very good. All right. So we have a motion for adoption of the uh, resolution. Oh, for introduction of the resolution. I'll move, Mr. President. Second. Thank you. We have a motion by Mr. Kovach to introduce the resolution and the second by Ms. Gilbert. Is there any further discussion or any questions for Mr. Dita? Mr. President, Mr. Day, I need to make the same disclosure. My wife serves on the board of my wife, Caroline Babble, and serves on the board of the Community Foundation of Carolina. Do you remember that from my Yes, <laughs> but I still need it on the record. Yes, sir, I do. Thank you. All right. Anyone else wish to be heard? Right. Well, let's not delay this any further. Then. Get it moving. All right. Thank you. All those in favor of the introduction, please say aye. 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 Those in favor say nay. Then I seem to have it in the eyes have it. And uh, the uh, resolution is introduced and the staff will begin its work uh, with the county and we take forward with, with what that's it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Very good. Thank you for being here for this. Thank you for your role in the play. Thank you. Thank you. Also, CLSI, Marshall Green, has been doing all of the annotation work. Yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I'm going to go put my kids to bed. It's not not the first good work. Thank you. Thank you. You know what else is happening? You're going to say. Yes, sir. In the natural morning. All right. That's it for uh, that's it for ordinances and resolutions. Uh, the next item is unfinished business. There is no unfinished business of which I'm aware. Does anybody have any unfinished business to bring before the council? Hearing none, we move on to the next section. The new business. We have one item under new business. Approval to waive the competitive bidding for a good cause. On the new subsection 36 4 F that paved the Wakefield Valley Trail and Hobbit's Pond. Uh, for that, we'll turn to Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. City of Westminster, Mayor and Common Council, awarded the contract to a big piece truck to lay 150 feet of storm drain pipe in the Hobbit Storm Pond. Killed the construction on Monday, January 29th, 2022. The city agreed to supply any required fill dirt for this project. With the understanding there would be some damage to the trail transporting material to the pond. Unfortunately, the damage was more than we anticipated and will require the trail to be completely resurfaced. We reached out to two local paving companies for pricing. Those two prices are below. Because this project be approved under the good clause, we cause mm -hmm. waiver to skip the bidding process and save time due to the unsafe trail conditions to the public and our obligation to meet the regulatory standards. First bid was the first quote was from TJ Miller for $142,393. The second was from MT Laney for $142,500. We would like to go with CJ Miller quote based on it being the lowest cost, their availability, and past experience. As noted, noted above, the proposed purchase has an associated cost of $142,393. We propose using $25,000 for the street department grade maintenance and repair our operating account for the remaining $14,000 from the Hobbit's Pond reconstruction project, $53,393 for the annual grade paving CSP. The app recommends that the Mayor and Common Council gain competitive vetting for good cause under a new subsection 36 4. Paving of the Wakefield Valley Trail at Hobbit's Pond. And award a contract to CJ Miller in the amount of $142,393. Thank you. 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 I just want to make sure, just for clarity's sake, this is the portion of the trail that goes between Union Town Road and Windsor Drive. Is that correct? That is correct. Okay. And it was damaged um, during. Can you explain that a little bit better for me? Yeah. So, uh, as we hauled in all the fill dirt to fill in where we extended the, the pipe, uh, that's it destroyed the trail. We came in off of Windsor um, and it just literally crumbled. Um, it was a 
developer green trail, let's say, that was put in 22 years ago. Looking at it, I'd say it was about an inch and a half thick. Um, uh, that's uh, one some additional clarity there. So right. the trail, the asphalt that was there, I'm assuming was asphalt yes, support, was older. Yes. Correct. And you're saying that it was originally put in by the developer, wasn't very thick. So it wasn't in pristine condition anyway. No. Is no. what your point it is. It was starting to show signs. It was starting to show signs. And this was enough to put it over the edge. Okay. Really over the edge. Okay. Because okay. I haven't personally seen it. I've heard about it, right. but I haven't seen it. Um, so I just wanted to, so it's a portion between Uniontown and Windsor Drive, um, but it's not like a perfectly new trail that got destroyed during the construction project. This was an older trail and probably would have had to be replaced anyway. This was just enough to push it over the edge. So we're here today. Thank you for the clarity. All right, thank you. Any further questions or any other discussion on this? Mr. Mr. President. Mr. Kovach, just briefly, I know we're not putting it out to a full competitive bid, but I do appreciate the fact you went out and got a couple of quotes. Yeah. So you, you were confident, and it's amazing they're $107 apartments. Yeah. And so yeah. that shows that, you know, I mean, look, it's a relatively small job for these guys. And these are the guys we use all the time anyway. They were, if you put it out to 50, you know, the 50 people bid on it, I'll bet you we would have came in lowest that way. So I think it makes sense to do this and just get it done. Thank you, Mr. Bocci. Anyone else? Yeah. Mr. President. Yeah, this is the oldest section, and the way I was going to, the way I have characterized it is that we've learned a lot about construction of trails since it was uh, initially installed. Um, I hope that um, if it's okay with everyone that we um, we make sure that we put some signage up. This, this is not just simply a recreational trail. This is a major thoroughfare. I walk it almost, I walk it all the time, and it is used by a lot of people. So perhaps we could make sure there's some good signage on Windsor Drive and on Uniontown Roadside um, to make sure that folks know that it's going to be under reconstruction. Um, I'm really happy that, that we've turned this around as quickly as we have, um, because it is a major thoroughfare. So um, that's all to everybody involved. To get this accomplished. And that's all I have, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Huh? All right. Anyone else? Hearing nothing, we will move on to a vote. All those in favor of approving the waiver, uh, please say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. Yeah, I see you have the ayes have it. And uh, approval is made. We will hand the process for us. Thank you. All right. Um, New business. Um, next item is departmental reports. Please have Ms. Hall with us, even though she's still voiceless. So we will go back to Mr. Depot to read it through departmental reports. Thank you. Yes. On the other side, and Director Abby Gruber with Rexham Park. Good evening. I actually do not have a report this evening because Councilman Dayhoff and Councilwoman Gilbert did such a good job at uh, okay. announcing what we have coming up this month. So thank you. Uh, that ends my report for this evening. Does anybody have any questions, Ms. Gruber? No? <laughs> um, let's move on to John Dick. Thank you, Mr. Depot. Uh, we talked about all the big projects that are going on in Public Works right now. Uh, the clock tower, the full scaffolding is in place now, and they have started to tear things apart there. So uh, it's well underway, it's on schedule. Uh, Really pleased with the contractor involved. He's there every day, um, makes a site visit sometimes twice a day. So uh, they're having some money really smooth there. It's online. It's okay. So they're still shooting, I think it is the third week in August. Wow. Will be completed. Yes. Well, <laughs> other than that, uh, the mulching and marrying season has started. So, <laughs> That's what the street department will be going for the next six months. Any other any other questions for Mr. Dick? Seeing any, let's move on to Eric Brown, the director of housing. Thank you, Mr. Depot. There's two things I wanted to bring to the uh, mayor council's attention. The first of which is we're real pleased with the progress we're making in terms of moving people off of our waiting list. And in the past month, we've been able to 
issue vouchers to eight families who also found places to live within that within that span of time. So we're real pleased with that. Uh, the second thing is we are beginning to feel the swing in the air in terms of the number of complaints we're beginning to get uh, from people about grass, weeds, and so forth. So I expect that volume to grow as it gets warmer. Mm -hmm. Uh, and and we're going to do our best to to be on top of that and respond uh, as quickly uh, and efficiently as we can, and and uh, and hopefully you know, keep down the volume of call that you have to receive. Uh, that's my report, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. So any, anybody have any questions of Mr. Brown? I can only cut my grass tonight. <laughs> 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 uh, let's move on to Richard Moore, the director of uh, IT. And no, just no reports done. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Moore? Not seeing any. Uh, Chief Ledwell, Police Department. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Council. The only thing I have to add to what uh, Councilman Kobashi talked about is that our uh, a rich quick response team case manager Brooke Sisson is currently attending the RX summit, which is an annual um, collaborative summit where all the community stakeholders who are focused on uh, uh, drug prevention, treatment, and recovery get together to discuss the latest and greatest strategy strategies to reduce drug overdoses and deaths. Um, it's uh, attended by multidisciplinary. Um, team of individuals, so she's there uh, for three days. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Any questions, Chief Ludwell? Uh, thank you uh, for planning. Um, on April 4th, the Board of Zone of Appeals held its elections, and Larry Brandt was elected the chair, and Scott Graff was elected vice chair of the Board of Zone of Appeals. Board of Zone Appeals also discussed the general procedure, scheduling, and staff reports for the BZA. Uh, there was a lot of good discussion as to how we might improve upon those, as well as some legal issues and procedures for the BZA as well. Um, and that includes possibly updating some of the rules or procedures for the Board of Zone Appeals. Um, or on April 5th, the Historic District Commission discussed the nation's 250th anniversary. Again, reviewed architecture for 71 and 73 West Main Street. Again, that's the um, old um, furnace coffee. They're still moving forward with their plans for that development. The Maryland Historic Trust Capital Grant Program. This is pointed out by um, City Administrator M. Haas for potential funding for future inventory update of the historic buildings of Westminster. And also discussed their involvement in the Flower and Jazz Festival sign up. Uh, our, our festival, I'm sorry. And that completes my report. Do you have any questions? I think, I think this is, uh, I think the, the mayor had a question. Yeah, it's for Mrs. Kruger. So at a meeting um, a couple of weeks ago, we were talking about the iNaturalist. Oh, and can right. you, that kicks off on the 22nd, correct? I on actually Earth day, I and we won't meet, I think, before then. So it actually, um, it, Thank you for reminding me that I did not mention that. So we are hosting an event at Wakefield on April 28th. Oh, April 28th. From 3.30 to 6.30. We're inviting everyone to join us to get wild at Wakefield. Um, we're having a beautiful bugs <laughs> program from 4 to 5. We'll have an information yeah. tent set up. Um, where people can go and learn about the app, how to download it how to use it while they're on site. We're encouraging them to make as many observations as they can. We'll also have um, friends of Hoshua and Bear Branch there leading nature walks, guided walks um, throughout the site. So lots going on. Um, we've put some prizes out there for those that make um, certain tiers of observations. They're eligible to be entered into a drawing for different types of prizes, depending on how many um, observations they make. We're giving away things like punch passes to the pool, a free week of summer camp, um, and different things that may be of interest to families and um, individuals 
who are looking for summer entertainment. So um, we're definitely happy to be putting that out there. The flyers are um, out and we've started advertising on social media. And so that does April 28th kicks off uh, the iNaturalist observation period and it runs through May 1st. So we encourage everybody to come out, learn about the app, make some observations at Wakefield on the 28th, and then they can continue to make observations that on the 28th, 29th, 30th, 30th and 1st of May. Thank you. I, I use iNaturalist in my AP environmental class and in my terrestrial environmental science class. And so some reason today I was thinking of that. <laughs> I was using it in North Carolina and I was thinking that, that we have that coming up. Sounds like right. a great extra credit opportunity for your students. Now <laughs> that <are. laughs> exactly. All right. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. There's no problem. I, I, was, I, I had a constable there. She can't compete. She's not eligible to hear. It's not the point. It's not the point. It's a good point. It's a good point. May we, may we be provided with that flyer, please? Can we have that emailed to us? Because I'm getting a lot of questions because um, I, I again want to repeat that the Wakefield Valley is starting to get a lot of attention from bird watchers. Uh, so um, if I have that flyer, because I, I have gotten some questions about it, and if I can get that flyer to sing from the same sheet, then that would be great. I'm, looking, I'm really looking forward to the events. Thank you, Anyone else? Any questions? Oh, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> last but not least, Council Member Dayhoff for the Fire Department. I don't have statistics this evening, but what it is that I, I do want to say for the record and for the folks that are viewing um, the uh, the video of this, that um, there there has been some frustration about the hiring process. What's a new Carroll County Department of Fire and EMS. And um, the city of Westminster, a, a number of folks have expressed frustration. A number of folks have been in touch with me about it, but um, there's nothing really that the city of Westminster can do. Um, I've been in touch with the, uh, the, the new fire chief for Carroll County about the process. He's been very receptive to <clears throat> discussions about the uh, the challenges um, starting a, a new combination department is very difficult. I've been involved in it in the periphery with Frederick County, um, and um, it's it's very difficult. It's very complicated, and I think that the fire chief has been very receptive to fine tuning some of the testing programs and things like that. But um, <clears throat> emailing myself or other members of the council, there's nothing that we can really nothing we could really do as far as helping out. I mean the, the Carroll County, the Carroll County um fire department and, and EMS uh they they don't get involved in city business and we should probably not get involved in the fire department. Um we don't we don't they don't row around in our pond and we don't row around in theirs. Uh and they should the folks that have questions about the hiring process and the complexity and the complications should be in touch with the Carroll County Fire Department. I have found I've had some disagreements with the fire chief about the hiring process, and he's very receptive to talking about it. <laughs> um, so I wanted to make sure that that word got out. Thank you, Mr. Deco. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. Thank you. That's it for departmental reports. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. All right. The final item on our agenda is citizen comments, where we invite the public to address the mayor and council. On any issues pertaining to tonight's agenda or any other city issues. For citizens not attending the public meeting, watching us virtually perhaps, we invite you to send us your comments or concerns via email at comments at westminstermd.gov. All comments received by email will be shared with the mayor and council. Commenters should include their address and phone number with their comments. We'll now invite comments from anyone who is present this evening. Um, if uh, anyone is like here would like to be heard, um, we ask them to uh, please uh, you know, let us know uh, and give us your name and address for the record. Anyone? Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Dick Krebs. I live at Eight Ridge Road in Westminster. Uh, been there for about 45 years. Uh, spent 
my adult life as a resident of Westminster. <laughs> I'm here to talk about walking. Um, four and a half. Oh, it's been close to 10 years ago now. Uh, my daughter and I went to NIH to a, a, an excellent program on dementia. At that time, um, it was clear that the only thing that was consistently positive about attacking this dreaded problem <laughs> was literally walking. The medications that were being uh, prescribed were not much better than placebos. Uh, there have been some developments over the last decade, but uh, walking and other exercise continues to be one of the best ways to uh, prevent or at least uh, ameliorate the dementias that go, can go with old age. Um, my wife died four years ago uh, with dementia. Uh, we walked a lot while she was still capable of walking. Um, I continue to walk. Uh, I don't like to just walk, though. I like to accomplish something in addition to keeping my brain active. Uh, and so I walk to the bank. I walk to the library. I walk to the grocery store. Uh, some years ago, I discovered all of these and uh, <laughs> found out that I could get uh, quality groceries there at a lower price than my walk to Safeway. And so I tend to head toward 140 uh, from my house on Bridge Road. Uh, as I'm sure most, if not all of you know, uh, for the last year now, there's been construction at Angler Road and 140, uh, which provided me with uh, an obstacle uh, getting to all these. It meant uh, either going an extra quarter of a mile or uh, walking very close to the 140 highway. Um, I'm very pleased to know uh, that over the last week, a sidewalk is in the process of being placed there. Uh, I don't know if the council had anything to do with that. If you did, thank you. Uh, I'm not sure where the town line is, whether uh, Westminster goes to the other side of 140. It does. Uh, I hope that you had some impact on having them put in a, a walkway. Uh, my children and grandchildren will be uh, relieved that their uh, old pop uh, is walking on a sidewalk rather than on the edge of the highway as he uh, goes a couple times a week to all of these. Um, I would like, though, to call to your attention that there is a stretch for me and for uh, other people along Angler Road on this side of 140, where there is no sidewalk. And either you walk in the road or on a parking lot uh, or on the grass, uh, and depending on the weather uh, and the amount of traffic, uh, that can be a bit of a challenge. Uh, at 83, I still get around pretty well, uh, but uh, I don't like to dodge cars. And uh, I would hope that uh, you might follow through on something that I have started, namely uh, what used to be Bauman's, where I have for 50 years now uh, bought my seeds in the spring for uh, planting. Uh, it's now going to be called Sweet Bay Farms. Uh, I have sent a, a message to the new owner asking him to consider putting on a sidewalk along uh, his section of that road, along Angler Road. Uh, the other section that is more complicated, at least for me personally, uh, is the Westminster Shopping Center. Uh, I think that my, as an individual citizen, contacting them and asking them to put in a sidewalk uh, would not get much of a response. And so I'm asking you as a council uh, to consider being in touch with them and asking them to uh, put in a, a sidewalk that would be all the way from downtown Westminster uh, across 140. Uh, I, I, as I walk that route a couple times a week, uh, I notice that I'm not the only person walking it. Uh, sometimes they're young families, sometimes they're people with carts. Uh, 
There are not only people going to Aldi's, there are people going to Goodwill, uh, to the shopping centers on both sides of Angler Road. Uh, and so if we had a, a safe place to walk, uh, it would be appreciated. Uh, I will continue to walk it, um, even if I don't get the response that I'm hoping for. Uh, but my children would appreciate it, and my grandchildren would appreciate it even more. Uh, that their old pop, when he starts out with his shopping bag, uh, comes back safely. So thank you all. Thank you. I'll just note that uh, the good part of that area on Longhain Road is not in the city. You know, on residence city lines are kind of unusual. Okay. You know, around the area. And so uh, part of that is not in the city, but nonetheless, they are certainly something we can uh, we can look into to have a conversation. Yeah. Uh, that is top of the county is private property and they don't have much control over it. They have any control over that. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was not aware of that obviously. Yes. Yeah. There's strange lines like that. Like yeah. previous previous yeah mayors and councils did not always make the wisest decisions about annexation opportunities. <laughs> but thank you for coming and thank, thank you for sharing your you know actually right write about walking and I'm sort of sorry for lost. I'm glad to see you out there. Thank you. Anyone else wish to be here tonight? That's all right. Um, in that case, that concludes our agenda and the meeting. Our next regular meeting, please note, will be held on Monday, April 24th, but we will be early that day at 4 p.m. Um, uh, so that uh, members of the council can attend a special event that evening. And with that, with that, without objection, we are adjourned. So, we're going to have to go back to the end of the